here. All right. Where's my chat at? We are going to need many, 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 many little polls. Now, I won't straw poll literally every single decision, uh, since, you know, I am the god king of whatever country we're going to be playing in. I do have um, the Social Engineering DLC and the Extremism DLC, which is good fun. Uh, I think I had some mods here. The, uh, the Portugal one, uh, which added uh, a few extra little bits and pieces in addition to just the country. We could play as Portugal. I guess the first straw poll will be the question of what country we play as. So let me straw poll that. Country? Question mark? <laughs> country. I should leave that typo in there because it's funny. Country. Portugal. Uh, that looks like UK. Yeah. Click UK. France. Uh, Germany? I'm bad at flags. USA, Canada, Australia. USA, Canada, Australia. Create poll. Boom. Uh, country poll. Bam. I haven't played as Germany yet. <laughs> Follow the link and vote. Germany and Canada, neck and neck. I'm definitely in the lead. Germany and Canada. All right, that's it for lunch. Last breakfast. <clears throat> Germany leading by a squeaker here. Looks like we're going to play as Germany. 300 votes in. Vote quickly, if you haven't done that already. 350 votes in. Germany got quite a lead now. It'd be hard to believe that anything can catch it. I think that's what we're going to play as. <clears throat> Come on, Canada, we can do it. I have played as Canada before, though, so this will be the first time playing as Germany, and that's pretty good, too. Well, if you take the German flag and you sort of, like, move it around a little bit, don't you get the, uh, the Belgian flag? It's like, yeah, you put it sideways, and then put the yellow in the middle, and now you've got the, the Belgian flag. Very similar. Yep, we're definitely going to go to Germany. So, what do they have to say about Germany? Population, 81 million. Size, 357,000 square kilometers. Life expectancy, 80 years. It's pretty good. The inequality index is 27. I think lower is better. I think lower means less inequality, right? GDP per capita is 39,000 in US dollars, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Poverty is 15%. Ethnicity, 81% white, 68% Christian, although that doesn't necessarily mean strict Christian. 12.9% obesity. Beer consumption, 119 liters per person per year. So that's like almost a pint a day of beer. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are way above that average. If I recall correctly, the stats are something like 20% of people consume 80% of alcohol. Kind of worldwide as a general thing. Sausage consumption. 60 pounds per person per year. Important stats. All right. So, what do we want our party name to be? We can type whatever we want in for our party name. I'll pick an opposition first. Just something generic. I don't know, the, uh, the reform party. What is our party going to be called? There ain't no party like a extra life party. Um... Just waiting for the chat to catch up here. The sauerkraut party. God, I love me some sauerkraut too. Sauerkraut's really good. Or, you know, given that it's um, one of the favorite snacks in uh, Germany, especially in Berlin, we could be the, the Donair party. Making me think of something else. Right? Donner party of four? Mm, Quill fascist party. Actually, that'll be one of the questions. How, are we, how do we want to play this? Let's do another poll. Let's do another poll. Um, we want to be... 
there's like basically four axes sort of that you can be you could see liberal versus conservative and the capitalist versus socialist and then there's also the religious aspect that gets thrown in there um how do i gonna so social liberal which is like hippie free for all there's um uh socialist conservative more communistic there's um capitalist liberal yay business and capitalist um conservative I have money and I am scared. And then finally, um, yeah, that'll be, that'll be the root. Okay, that'll be the root of our, our, of our alignment. And then we can have potentially another poll in terms of like, I don't know, authoritarianism. Um, political alignment. The baguette party? What? No. Beer fest party. Give equals donate. Oui, c'est vrai. Um, communist liberal Germany. Only God is beer. Berliner party. Ain't no party like a Berliner party. Because Berliners are donuts in many parts of Germany. Unless you're in Berlin itself. In which case, whatever the word is, it's like the word for a pancake in German. Yes? No? Maybe so? Bratwurst party. That's pretty good. It's a sausage fest. Mm -hmm. So we'll find out what people want uh, to have as a winner. And we'll use that potentially to influence our vote. Socialist liberal hippie free-for-all is currently winning. I did not expect that. And socialist conservative. People definitely want the socialist side of it. The beer and cologne party. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I think uh, Kolsch once per year is enough for me. Die Party, an actual German party. They want to build a new wall around Berlin. The Wiener Party. Angel Angela Merkel's house party. Party for Progress is actually a great name overall, and like so generic. -y. Essentials Hug Party. Like Berliners. Yeah, you know, I think it's the Berliner party. And looks like socialist, liberal, hippie free-for-all kind of thing is winning. All right, so socialist, liberal, as opposed to a national socialist, which we don't want in Germany. Um, socialist, liberal kind of party. We'll go ahead and boost up the difficulty to 150%. Um... <clears throat> I think that'll be enough. I could also lower the innate socialism and liberalism, which would make it even harder for us. But there we go. Berliner Party. All right. Congratulations on your election victory. Welcome to your new job as chancellor. The lives of all 81 million citizens are now in your hands. As you will imagine, there are a number of situations and concerns you will need to deal with as soon as possible while keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life. Plus, do not forget that you face re-election in four years, so we need to monitor the opinion polls and our party membership. Good luck. So our GDP is in the tank. Health, Midland, crime, eh. Unemployment, eh. Education's good. And a fair amount of poverty as well. Now, right away, first thing... If you haven't played this game, I know it looks like a big ol' mess, but trust me, it's really, 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 really easy to decipher. So, things in blue are just sort of your core stats. For example, the gross domestic product, which is how much money the country makes, basically, as a whole. Right? These are just things that are. Um, and usually you can't really, uh, you can't affect them uh, directly. Right? So, this one here is health. How healthier people are. So, there, there's nothing to do here. These are just stats. And generally, you want these to either be very high in the case of health or very low in the case of violent crime, for example. Wow, there's like no violent crime at all. 
That's pretty good. What about regular crime? Yeah, a little above average. The stuff that's in white, these are um, these are policies that you can enact or um, cancel or change. For example, do we allow genetically modified crops? They're totally illegal, scientific use only, acceptable with some restrictions, or completely legal, for example. Um, revert those changes. Um, you know, do we have maternity leave? Uh, do we have police? And how much do we fund them? That sort of thing. So, and then finally, the things in red are like major problems that have triggered because of certain uh, conditions. So, for example, we have internet crime here. Internet crime is caused by having high crime or high technology and higher crime. So, technology levels and crime increase internet crime. Intelligence services decrease internet crime. Now, what you have to remember here is that green always means more and red always means less. Sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, um, but you'll get confused because you're like, oh, but isn't, how can crime intelligence, serve? it'll be weird on some of the screens. It's like bizarre, especially when you look at some of the environmental stuff, it'll, it'll feel backwards. But if you sort of go through it, it'll sort of make sense. So we can tweak a lot of these, um, these laws. We can also enact new policies through different sets of groups. So we can turn things on and off and do whatever. So generally speaking, what you wanna do is, well, you wanna do a couple things. A, you wanna get reelected. So in four years, we're gonna have to make sure that we can get at least half the vote, which is generally the prop, the popularity over here. These are all the demographics that affect the game. So environmentalists love us, farmers love us, retired people love us, parents love us already. Um, the capitalists already don't like us, as do the conservatives, which as it turns out will be fine because we're going social liberal. The liberals don't love us either. Now, if we click here, what's nice though is the liberals are about 62% of the population. So if we can make the liberals happy, it increases the chance that we will get elected. But one thing to note is that each person in the game is not just one person. We open up a focus group over here, and so we can take a look at different people. So first, like Florian over here is a socialist, liberal, religious, poor person who works for the state and everyone belongs to the everyone group as well. So it's a, a set of all these things put together that determines um, how they will vote and so on and so forth. And some people see unhappy. This person is unhappy, even though they're liberal. Well, I suppose the liberals don't like us overall. So we got to make people kind of happy as much as possible uh, where we can. So that's one thing. Second thing is we don't want to super piss off one group too much because if we do, they can uh, assassinate us. You can combat assassination attempts by having a lot of secret police, um, wiretapping, all that kind of security stuff will make it a lot harder for anyone to assassinate you, but it's still bad. So, so usually one of the things I like to focus on early on is the GDP. Because the more money we make, the more tax money we'll have, which means we can, you know, have better schools and hospitals and police forces and all kinds of crap like that. And we can lower taxes, right? The better the GDP, the more we can lower taxes. So right now, crime is reducing GDP. The global economy is reducing GDP. We can't, we don't have any control over that. Traffic congestion. We also have uncompetitive economy and a little bit of internet crime. Uncompetitive economy is particularly bad. Um, now, this is a... Um, this is like a special sort of condition that's triggering. If we can get the uncompetitive economy to drop below the green line, then it will go away completely. And we're actually almost there. Um, the reason there's uncompetitive economy is one, our corporate tax rate is bringing the uncompetitive economy up. Okay, making it worse. Corporate tax is making it worse. Our productivity is bringing uncompetitive economy down, which is good. We actually are so productive that this by itself is almost eliminating our uncompetitive economy. So if we could boost productivity even a little bit higher, that would help. Or if we could drop corporate taxes a little bit, that would also help as well. Corporate taxes are pretty low at 11%. It's bringing 13 or almost 14 billion euros per, um, per month, I think. Is this one? Per quarter. Yeah, per quarter. Each turn is a quarter. Uh, right now, we are running a deficit of 77 billion, so if we were to... Is it? Yeah, so if we were to drop that, it would make our deficit 90 billion per month. I don't think we can drop corporate taxes. Plus, we're playing socialist liberals. 
Obviously, if we're going to do anything, we're going to increase corporate taxes. I don't think I want to do that yet. I want to get rid of the uncompetitive economy first. So with that in mind, how do we improve comp uh, productivity? Keeping in mind that we're socialist liberals. Well, maybe more education, more technology, more technology grants. Those would all improve productivity. Higher wages, but we don't control wages directly. Also, if we can get rid of, if we could lower alcohol consumption, that could improve things. That's hard. We could get rid of maternity leave, but A, that wouldn't be very socialist, and B, evil. Um, and right now, our health is bringing down our productivity because we're not as healthy as we could be. Mostly due to alcohol abuse, but also obesity. If we could get rid of the obesity problem, that would help, that would do a lot for us. That would do a hell of a lot because it would lower the cost of our state health services and improve health overall. I think I might want to tackle obesity first. Nulani says just tax alcohol at 80%. We could. We could definitely do that. It would lower um, alcohol consumption. It does increase poverty though because everybody drinks and higher taxes on consumer goods like this will impact the poor. Um, more than everyone else. Outlaw meat. So here's the thing. We can, under... Where is it? What, it might be public services. Ah, we could put in junk food taxes. Um, we can put in health food subsidies. Right? So junk food taxes, they hurt the poor. But they do cut back on obesity. Health food subsidies help the poor. And it's also less bad than, yeah, the, the so-called fat taxes. And it will make healthy foods cheaper. That might be the way to go. Um, there's a healthy eating campaign, which just encourages people to eat healthier. It's just marketing. It's cheap to run. At the highest end, the cost would be $365 million, which is not that much. Uh, the health food subsidies, actually, the cost would be about the same. I think I, I really like the idea of tackling obesity first. If we can get that to fall off, then our productivity will rise, which should eliminate the uncompetitive economy, plus save us money overall. Like, we spend money here to ideally save money in our health system. All right, health food subsidies. And you can see here, the more we put in, the bigger the effect it has. That being said, so our obesity here, so going all the way to maximum, which this basically doubles how much we're spending, almost doubles. It doesn't quite double the impact on obesity, but it also has, it does improve poor earnings and health overall. I think we're going to have maxed out health food subsidies. What do people think? I think we're going to do this one. We will do some more straw polls. We'll implement that, and I'm going to go ahead and also do the, um, the healthy eating campaign. Encourage people to eat better as well. Oh, this is not going to have much of an impact at all. It's expensive and not that potent. Well, not on obesity, but it does raise health a lot. And high health is good. Let's try both for now, and then we can always uh, cut back on things later. Now, these policies do tend to take time to uh, take effect. Um, so this will take two quarters to have a full implementation, the healthy eating campaign. And the... Um, Health food subsidies. Oh, will be pretty darn fast. Well, it'll implement in one turn. The obesity effect will take nine quarters to have a full effect. The poor earnings kick in right away. Uh, the health will take eight quarters to, to process. So it will take a little bit of time. So to enact these policies, one, we need money, but we also spend political capital to do this, which is our sort of influence in the government. Um, and if we run out of political capital in a quarter, we can't do anything else. So we're going we're gonna to do that. Now, the other things we need to worry about, we've got inner city riots which isn't good. It brings up crime, also pisses off conservatives. It's mostly caused by poverty, crime, unemployment. Hopefully we'll, we'll reduce poverty and the riots will go away on their own. Right? That sounds pretty good. We've also got a big homelessness problem. So we can combat that very effectively. So uh, right now, the poverty level is bringing poverty up. The private housing we have is helping to bring it down. Our unemployment benefit is bringing it down a bit. But the high unemployment levels is what's really jacking it up. We could also provide state housing. It doesn't look like we do that, which I'm kind of surprised about. There's no state housing. We could do that, or we could just work on bringing down unemployment. 
So all these red things are things that bring down unemployment, so they're all good. The unemployment benefits actually increases the unemployment, and our poor GDP is really the, the base cause of it. So as long as we solve the GDP, unemployment should start to drop. Any other ideas for people for what we should do? Again, we're going to try to play socialist liberal. It doesn't mean we have to... And we're playing at Germany, kitty cat. I don't know if people want me to run other things. There's lots of good stuff. I mean, there's lots of things that are supremely good. Interestingly enough, pollution is not a problem. This is probably the first country I've ever played where it's not an issue. I'm, I'm anticipating it's because we've got really good um, mass transit. Rail usage is relatively high. Bus usage is very low, though. Car usage is still relatively high. Huh, that's usually where the pollution comes in. Community policing. That's an excellent idea. I always forget about that one. So I think that's under law and order. Um, do we already have community policing? We do. But we could boost it. It does cost a lot of money. Like, we could boost it by a billion dollars. An extra billion dollars. Which would help lower alcohol abuse. Increase. This increases the people who are liberal. Which is good, because we're mostly going to be sucking up to liberals. Lowers crime, violent crime, lowers racial tension. This is probably a good uh, good thing to spend. It's a lot of extra money. It's an extra billion. But, you know, billion here, a billion there. Eventually you end up with real money. Did my political capital not drop at all? It's free to raise community policing. Wow, all right, I'm surprised. Legalize can cannabis. Yeah, we could... Uh, we have drug laws here. Narcotics are currently completely outlawed. We could legalize it. Hell, we could legalize all the things. We could legalize pot. It'll make the liberals happy. It'll piss off the parents. It increases crime, though. And it generates legal drug consumption, which can then lead to drug addiction. Although you can then tax the drugs afterwards, which is kind of funny. You can get people addicted to drugs and then tax the drugs, which we have done before. Lower military spending, no drugs, tax horses. Internet censorship. Fight pollution before it happens, which is a good, really good idea. Legalize it and tax it all to hell. Let's do a poll. What should our drug policy be? I already know what the answer is going to be. Keeping in mind that, you know, legalizing everything will probably wreck, ruin our country. Keep that in mind. Uh, illegal pot, okay. Uh, LSD, okay. All okay. Create poll. I'm very concerned. Super concerned. No more pollution. From now on, we all travel in tubes. I like that idea, Rhino. Oh, God. That's interesting. Hardly anyone's voting for the LSD by itself. It's either fully legal or pot or illegal, which is kind of neck and neck. Pot and keeping things illegal is neck and neck and neck. There's hardly a, anywhere close to a majority. Bit of a plurality on the pot, okay. But only by a smidgen. All right, well, the people have spoken. I guess we're going to legalize pot. And we'll tax it later. Oh, I don't have the political capital. So it's got to stay where it is for now. Sorry, we'll, we'll come back to it. So the Peggy rating is the bullshit thing that makes video game things a major, major pain in the ass in... Um, in Germany. And I, it's kind of funny that it's there. Can I not cancel this? Why can't I cancel it outright? That's weird. You literally can't. Oh. Although I can make it inactive. Oh my god. Making games harder to get is will lower unemployment. Because when all the video games are available, people sit at home and play video games. By making less good video games in Germany, we can drop unemployment. 
On the other hand, it also hurts GDP because we sell the less video games. And the liberals hate the uh, the Peggy rating. Whereas if we get rid of it, it'll make the liberals happy. It'll also boost our GDP slightly because we'll have more video games. It won't lower unemployment quite as much. Or at all, actually. Oh, Peggy is UK. Okay. They've got one in Germany. I just don't remember the name of it. Yeah, okay, we're going to get rid of it. And that's pretty much it for my political capital. So let's skip to the next turn and see what happens. So we got a credit rating downgrade. I mostly blame the world economy for that. Unemployment is going up. Education is still great. GDP is still whatever. Global economy is in recession. It's a problem. Uh, how's the obesity coming? It is starting to go down. Nice. Uncompetitive economy hasn't gone away yet, but again, obesity goes away, productivity will go up, competitive economy will improve. Uh, we could also mess around with like tariffs and things like that, but I don't think we're going to do that. Inner city riots is actually going up, probably because there's more poverty going on. Hmm. And internet crime. It would be nice to get rid of internet crime. Because everyone hates us, it increases crime overall, and it hurts the GDP. Now, we can fix this with a lot of, like, horrible internet laws that are not particularly liberal. So we probably don't want to do that, because that's not our policy. State housing. Yeah, we may have to do state housing. Again, oh, wow, homelessness is going up. Again, I would very much like it if we could um, just fix homelessness by improving the economy. But we might have to spend money to make money here. Spend money to remove some of the homelessness problems. Um, yeah, we mostly just need to drop the uh, the poverty. Alcohol abuse is still maxed out. Germany! We could increase the, uh, the police forces. But we did vote to... Uh, decriminalize marijuana. So apparently we're going to do that first with our political capital. So there we go. Popularity is going up overall, I think. Deport the homeless. Tobacco tax. Uh, that's not very social liberal. Well, in a way, not really though. More nanny state-ish. And it hurts the poor, but it helps decrease tobacco use. Actually, it doesn't hurt the poor at all. What? It's ironic that we'll tax the tobacco and then people will become less smokers. It'll improve their health. I'm actually in favor of doing this. Actually, are there like public smoking laws? I don't know if that's a thing that's in here. Narcotics anti-stigma. So we can run advertisement to make drugs seem less bad to get more people on drugs so that we can tax them more? Huh. You know, compulsory school sports, that would um, help improve health quite a bit. Super heavy taxation solves everything. Well, we are socialists, I suppose. That's the thing. I was like, oh, we can't tax poor people. And that's true, but socialists are, you know, relatively, you know, tax-oriented as well, right? You you tax to get social services. I mean, you got to pay for them somehow. Not like it's an, an evil plan, necessarily. It's just one of the way it works. Uh, socialists, in particular, really like income tax. It's a good way of doing that. We could also uh, slap down some extra wealth taxes, right? Uh, well, we don't have enough uh, political capital. But we could throw down um, a capital gains tax, which is, you know, kind of anti-rich. Mansion tax. I mean, it's not anti-rich, but, you know, it'll mostly affect them, whereas sales taxes mostly affect the poor. We have no political capital, so I guess we're going to go to the next turn regardless. Compulsory drug addiction. State of emergency. We got a quest here. Police cannot handle the rampant crime in our country. We can declare a state of emergency and call in the army. This will take care of riots and organized crime, but will weaken our defense and the economy. Whoa! All right, we need to pull for this. Uh, do we declare um, state of emergency? Yes. No. So I'll create the poll here. So we have an extreme situation. We will need to use extreme measures. The average citizen has nothing to fear. The army will withdraw as soon as the order is restored. We're going to 
create a dictatorship accidentally here, or don't declare a state of emergency. The military has an important job defending our country against outer enemies and should not point their guns at their, our own citizens. We must provide the police with proper tools or take care of the underlying causes of crime. I mean, certainly I'm sure it could be said that the more liberal um, option is the don't, right? Letting the army in? Oh, that's, that's dangerous. Very low luxury goods tax. Maybe we could do that. No is winning quite quite a bit. All right, we're not going to declare a state of emergency. Which should make the liberals happier. Yeah, no state of emergency. Liberals are much, much happier about that. Obesity, on its way down. Homelessness, still there. Oh, our uncompetitive economy has dropped ever so slightly by itself. It might go away next turn regardless. Our health is improving, and that has a big effect on our productivity. People need less sick days. And yes, libertarianism isn't the same as liberalism. We are liberal, not libertarian, because we are social liberals, not capitalist liberals, which would be the difference there. So liberals want to be free to run their own lives. Liberals want that, or liberalists want that extended to all aspects of business. Whereas social liberals want to be free to run their own personal lives, but like businesses and, and the economy to sort of be more balanced. Boosted 99 thank you for subscribing. Uh, gay marriage, that's the Gender Transition Act. Do we have gay marriage? Right here. Same-sex marriage is available with request. What does that mean? Same-sex civil partnership or same-sex marriage? Well, that is the, the turbo-liberal route. What's nice about this, too, is it increases the number of people, the, the people who are part of the liberal group, the liberal demographic. So more people will become liberal as this becomes accepted, and then the liberals will like us. It will greatly upset conservatives and religious people. If it becomes illegal, all of a sudden we actually create crime. Other than that, this has no impact on any aspect of our economy. It just has to do with um, how much various people like us and what party they belong to or what sort of uh, demographic they belong to. So, I mean, clearly we're going to allow same-sex marriage, obviously. The question is if we are going to rush into it right now or if we have to spend our political capital elsewhere. You know, we're already fixing obesity, which is going to deal with things. I think this is actually a great time for us to um, enact same-sex marriage. Um because we don't want to mess too much with the economy. We want to make changes slowly, and cautiously. And we do, hold, hold on. Someone made an excellent point. We may have too many religious people. Come on, we're keep mousing over. Here we go. Um, we only have a 30% religious people in the th country. So again, like 62% of people were considered Christian, but really only 30% of them are religious. If we could decrease the number of people who are religious, that might be the first thing to do. We can do that. Um, creationism versus evolution. Right now we're teaching both systems. If we teach evolution only, it will piss off the religious people, but it would also make fewer religious people. It will take a long time. It will take 30 turns before it really takes an impact. But this is a great way to decrease the number of people who are religious, if that's what we want to do. So this can be step one, and then step two can be uh, legalize gay marriage and do other things that'll piss off religious people. Remove banned Sunday shopping. That's an excellent idea. In fact, we're going to try to do that in my hometown, potentially this uh, this election in like a couple of days. Um, was that? Yeah, it's right over here. So right now we have, we're not allowed to, be to shop on Sunday, and it's like pretty high in terms of like what's allowed and what's not allowed. Apparently none of these stats matter. Oh, there's no cost. It's all the same. It doesn't matter where the where the meter is. It's either there or we cancel it. Um, the trade unionists love it. Religious people love it. The liberals don't like it. And it hurts the GDP. Trade unionists are so, sort of socialistic kind of thing, but... What do we think? Are we going to ban Sunday shopping? Or get rid of Sunday shopping? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, there's a lot of places where Sunday shopping is 
um, illegal or at least limited. Um, and that's what it is in Sudbury here. Uh, it's like most stores can't be open as late on Sundays. It sounds like people want to get rid of this. Yeah, we're going to get rid of the Sunday shopping. It'll help the GDP as well. So we'll do that. Unfortunately, the religious people will hate us a little bit more. And then next turn, when we get more political capital, we're going to go full evolution. We got completed a miracle operation. Everyone loves us a little bit more. Nice. Uncompetitive economy has ended. Bam, 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 bam. GDP is going to improve. Our credit rating got downgraded again, which is not good. It hurts our GDP. Um, so that sucks. But as our GDP improves, our uh, credit rating will improve, which will then boost our GDP even more. And then whenever this recession ends, we're going to be in fantastic shape. Health has improved, which is why we are no longer uncompetitive, which is great. Um, so yes, I'm going to go evolution only. Less religious people. That's most of our uh, political capital. We could uh, check our cabinet. I think our cabinet's actually pretty good. Foreign policy uh, minister Nicole Ziegler here is fantastic. Five political capital per turn is really, really, really good. High loyalty. Good skill. Tobacco tax. So what do people want? I can't, I can't raise it. Still seems like a swell idea. It doesn't raise much money, but lowers the tobacco usage. Maybe we'll prioritize that. It's going to be tough. Like, what do we want to do? Cut back on cigarettes or legalize gay marriage faster? Maybe I'll do a vote. Actually, I have to do a vote here. Mercenary firm offer. The gaps in our military defense is no secret. A private military firm named Black Shield has offered us to hire their mercenaries for protecting embassies, border crossings, and outposts. This will be cheaper than deploying regular forces, though not popular among liberal and socialists. Oh, then we have to turn it down. Sorry, I can't even do a vote here. It's like the anti-liberal socialist thing, so we have to turn down. The most central purpose of national government is an army where citizens fight under their own flag. We do not have full authority for hired guns. They might get their hands on military secrets or break international law. We should handle the shortage in some other way. Done. So, straw poll. Uh, next decision. Uh, raise tobacco cost. Legalize gay marriage. Just a question of the order that we do things in, basically. Curious to see what people might uh, might say. Poll. Oh, it's 50-50. Holy crap. It's 50-50. Maybe a slight edge on the raising the tobacco cost. Okay, again, we're trying to sneak it in here. We're we're trying to not get to the point where the religious people will execute, will assassinate me. They're already hating me. We have to we have to like ease them in and lower their membership. So we're gonna go ahead and max out the tobacco tax. And see what happens there. It might trigger an event. But hopefully we can decrease the tobacco usage. Where do we see it? Tobacco usage over here. Oh, it's already almost non existent. That's why the tobacco tax is going to make us almost no money. We have tobacco law as well. Oh, you have to be 21. We can ban cigarettes outright. But I don't think we'll ban it. We'll just make it really expensive to buy. Oh. Now gay marriage is ahead. Well, when I was checking, the tobacco costs were ahead. Hey, we have a technological advantage, which is really, really, really good. And we want to keep this around because we have high technology and because we push evolution over creationism. We have a technological advantage because we're creating like scientifically minded people, which is going to boost our productivity even higher and affect our GDP as well. Debt protection law, because we are social liberals, we have to go and limit the debt collection agency behavior. And now we will legalize gay marriage. Boom. So we're going to try to get the religious people to become liberal. So that's pretty good. How's the homelessness going? Okay, it is going down. Obesity. Nice. Achievements. <laughs> God's kingdom. Super religious kingdom. I think that was the uh, the birth of quillessentialism. How's our uh, deficit? Down to 74 billion. Okay, good, good, good. 
making more money. So uh, we could implement rent controls, extremely popular with voters. This will make it so that um, housing has to be reasonable because we're not actually doing state housing right now. We could state housing is extraordinarily expensive, very, very expensive. And the more state housing we have, the less private housing there is. And so it doesn't instantly solve the homelessness problem unless we're willing to spend many, many, many billion dollars. Maybe later on we'll do this. I'm thinking rent control right now might be a great way to help tackle homelessness while keeping the private uh, housing industry there. Yeah, you have to rise intelligence levels. Yeah, and you're right. We will have to put in some extra intelligence um, to protect ourselves from assassination. But we don't have any radicalized groups yet. Soon, though. Child care provisions? It's expensive. More parents can go back to the workforce sooner. The rent is too damn high, party. See? There we go. We have to do that. So, it'll lower capitalist income, but improve poor earnings because they're basically spending less. It does decrease private housing, right? Because there's less investment in private housing at that point. It lowers poverty and makes socialists happy. We are going to have to get some state housing in at some point. Actually. Because this is not actually going to uh, resolve our um, homelessness. It'll actually make it it might make it worse because fewer people will build building houses and apartments. Too bad. So, private housing. Yeah. Hmm. Where our homelessness might get worse. Maybe we do have to go state housing. I guess we'll go rent control and state housing. Ban all marriage. I could ban all divorce. I always like to do that. Legalize the gay marriage. Ban divorce. You can get married to anyone you want, but it's forever. So think it through. Uh, it will help get rid of rides. What will help get rid of rides? Create an anti-pope? What? <laughs> I don't think that's the right game. Internet crime. Um, bus lanes, biofuels, bus subsidies helps poor earnings a lot. Free bus passes. Monorail. Subsidized school buses. That doesn't exist. Fuel efficiency standards is actually a pretty good idea. Cycling campaign. That's what we want. And potentially even bicycle subsidies. Cycling campaign. Listen, people. Use bikes. So we'll lower car, rail, and bus usage. Increase health overall. That's a big win. What else can we do like that? You know, tourism campaigns and stuff might be a really good idea. Why do middle-income people hate you so much? I don't know. That's a great question. Let's take a look. Probably income tax. Income tax. Because middle income people are people who are actually relatively well off. So income tax impacts them. Income tax is 41%, which is, you know, high-ish. And yet, yeah, mostly pisses off the middle class. It doesn't piss off the wealthy as much because they have ways around it. Airline tax. Some impact on GDP also hurts tourism. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Our popularity is increasing, which is really good. Liberals like us, there's going to be more and more of them. Very slowly going up. And religious membership, slowly ticking down. But yeah, they're probably going to get radicalized soon. Um, my secret police... Or, no, that's the police force. That's not the secret one. Oh, what is this? Euthanasia. Wow. Um. 
intelligence services. Massively drops internet crime. Does upset the liberals. But will protect me from all the crazy religious people that are probably going to try to execute me soon. What do you think, guys? Do we raise rise up our intelligence service to the max to keep us protected? Yeah, you know, we're secretly creating some sort of crazy police state. Max income tax, low prostitution tax. No, that's silly. Uh, give your give the police more funding, which is something we can do. No, yes, raise, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Most people are in favor of raising this out. Okay, we're going to go maximum intelligence services. It'll cost money. But if we get rid of internet crime, um, that would be pretty significant. Because it's pissing off everyone, it's increasing crime, and lowering GDP. Someone won a Nobel Prize. Boosts our GDP, makes our patriots happy, our liberals happy, and makes more people patriots. Okay, which is fine. GDP continues to go up. Unemployment is starting to drop. Health is going up. Poverty is going down. Yes! This is at 150% difficulty. Like, what the hell? And if we take a look at threats, so these are groups and their membership. Um, and then we've got the radicalized versions down here, which there is none yet. So there is no one who is going to try to assassinate me yet. We'll work on it. Retirees are incredibly happy. Mm, state pensions. Housing situation, not really being helped. I think we are going to have to put in state housing. Oh, did my cabinet start to suck? Hmm. This minister sucks. But replacing ministers does, like, sort of shake everyone up a little bit, so I like to do it in one fell swoop if I have to. Um, might want to tackle some of that crime there. Yeah, well, crime is going to drop um, with our intelligence services. Now, the intelligence services doesn't help the inner city riots, but um, that does improve the crime situation, which is going to help drop this. Also, we're dropping poverty a little bit, which is going to be really good. I think we are going to need the state housing, right? I think that's pretty clear. That's really our thing. Homelessness assistance program. Well, it's cheaper than state housing. Provides essential street outreach and emergency shelter services, as well as emphasizes homelessness prevention and rapid rehousing assistance. I don't think I've ever put this in. Compulsory work for the unemployed. Well, that doesn't sound like our sort of thing. I like this. Again, we'll sort of sneak it in rather than starting on, on state housing right away. Although probably I should just go to state housing. So we can spend more. It upsets the capitalists a little bit. But mostly it drops homelessness like crazy, reduces poverty, makes the poor happier, and makes the socialists happier. I think we want maximum homelessness assistance programs. So hopefully that'll help out. That's our political capital this term. So let's see what goes on next. Security. Oh, the Church of Christ has been expressing dismay. They're here. They might start to uh, become radicalized. Oops. We have a decision. War Crimes Court membership. The International War Crimes Court invites our nation as a member. Each member state obliges to arrest and hand over suspected war criminals for trial. Should we sign and ratify their status? We can ratify it. Our only hope for world peace is an international agreement against war crimes and genocide. Membership will improve our international credibility and appease the liberals. So we're going to go with that. But just out of curiosity, <clears throat> we can turn down membership. We shall not let a foreign institution have jurisdiction over our citizens. The war on terror requires us to use enhanced interrogation techniques and might lead to collateral damage. Our brave soldiers and officers should not be treated as criminals. Obviously, we're going to ratify membership. Who wouldn't? I can't imagine. Um, okay. Homelessness. Taking a sharp dive. Excellent. And the homelessness assistance program is only just starting to kick in. It's going to take uh, three more quarters before it's fully, um, fully implemented there. So, it will, it will probably resolve our homelessness situation, which will help out uh, with crime, for example. Do, 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 Trixton points out that Nuremberg is in Germany. Right. Um, what do we want to do next? We could change our science funding. Although right now, our technology and education is pretty freaking phenomenal. I mean, we do still have the technological advantage, which is making a big deal. What's our GDP sitting at? 
Look at it just shoot up once we take over control. Get rid of Peggy. Um, get rid of the uncompetitive economy. Ban Sunday shop or get rid of the Sunday shopping ban. Get the tech advantage. Get the Nobel Prize. Yeah. Global economy is still dragging us down considerably. But other than that, we're doing awesome. Do, do, do. Deficit is going down. Yeah. I mean, our debt is still increasing month to month to month, but the deficit is dropping and our GDP continues to improve. Soon we'll probably have a surplus and start paying off our debt, which is nice. Did you ever get back to teaching everyone evolution? Yes, everyone is being taught evolution. Still going to take a really long time for the religious membership drop to really kick in and the liberalism increase to go. But yeah. The face! 3.14159. The face pie. Thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome to our uh, crazy little version of Germany over here. What do we want to do? Go after alcohol. Yeah. Could tax it. <laughs> alcohol consumption. But I think we'll start with an anti-alcohol campaign, maybe. That seems like a good idea to me. Um, force political military religious oath. Public religious broadcast. Sex education. Um, National orchestra. Oh, cool. Some of this, uh, because the art is different, I'm thinking is uh, from some of the mods I downloaded. That's a great idea, though. Okay, where was the booze thing? Alcohol awareness campaign. Alcohol exists, everyone. So we can max it out. That's a start on alcohol consumption, but it's not great. Where's the alcohol tax? So again, it hurts the poor and creates more poverty. It hurts equality as well, but has a big impact on alcohol consumption. I don't know. Hmm. Gaming industry subsidies. We should probably have some of those. Some of these are really good. The business startup campaign, I think, has a pretty good impact. Trade council. I mean, some of these might upset people, and but some might not. What do people want to do? Nuclear program. Where was the nuclear program? Was that a thing? National Anthem at the start of the news. National Anthem in schools. Oh, right. The drug tax. Yes. Absolutely. That's the whole idea. Get them, get them hooked and then tax it. To the max. Increases poverty. Lowers legal drug consumption. But can give us up to $2 billion a quarter. And young people and poor people hate it. That's okay. Tax the drugs. You know, we're going to fix uh, poverty in other ways, right? Holy crap, we can make a lot of money off the, the uh, alcohol tax. Holy crap! In foreign policy, revert change. Oh, a nuclear program. Nuclear technology is potent and controversial, except, except atomic weapons. The military can use it for reactor... Powered ships and armor-piercing shells. Civilian reactors can produce electricity, rather low cost. Radiation and waste management are major concerns, as well as the risk that a civilian nuclear program becomes militarized. I like nuclear energy. So, ah, so we can have experimental, small-scale, civilian reactors, tactical weapons, strategic weapons. I am going to go and maximum funding for civilian reactors. So the environmentalists don't like it, and it hurts the environment. Really? Nuclear reactors, except when they explode, the only thing they put out is like water vapor. It is a long-term impact on the environment. I just realized it's not going to hurt the environment for a really long time, so I guess it just factors in the chance of a random nuclear explosion. 
Hurts foreign relations. Capitalists like it. Increases energy efficiency, though. Edge into attack weapons. Hmm. Yeah, nuclear energy is really clean compared to fossil fuels. What you don't realize is, like, the amount of, like, radiation that gets put into the atmosphere from coal plants exceeds what leaks out of nuclear plants. It's, like, ridiculous. And nuclear waste is, like, a, so a non-issue. Nuclear waste is, like, incredibly easy to dispose of. Long-term issue of waste. Sure, long, long, long-term. Yeah, all right, I get that. I am socialist. Whether you're pro or against the nuclear program has nothing to do with socialism. It has to do with a certain type of environmentalism. And I personally believe that nuclear power is better for the environment. I don't know if that's true. But based on what I've seen, that seems to be the case. Green parties against nuclear energy. Rejects a lot of water. Oh, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and imply it for now. But I'm going to open up the possibility that we might revert it later on given the will of the people. I should have done an election. If I hadn't already clicked the button and spent the political capital. Um, so let's do a vote on power lines, but then I'll do a vote on nuclear power because I did hit the button right away. Some people were asking for it, but I don't know if that was the majority. Power lines. Um, angry citizens are protesting against a, power, a project to build power lines through their villages. Power lines are necessary to further increase the, uh, the use of renewable energy sources. Actually, we're playing as Germany. It should be like all solar and wind, right? Uh, actually, I think real life Germany banned nuclear power. Not building them would be an economic setback, but if you ignore the citizens, this will make them even angry and supportive of the cause. Build power lines anyway. No one wants the power lines, but you know, they have to be built. Or stop construction. We can use underground power lines or something. So, uh, build, stop. Let's see the vote. Power lines. Yeah, and nuclear power is relatively um, relatively common in Canada. And we have like a crap ton of hydroelectric power. There's so much water flow that most of our power, as I recall, is hydroelectric. And then we have a little bit of nuclear. And then basically virtually no coal or oil. Do, do, do. Wait, did I? I linked the wrong thing. Son of a bitch. This is the right poll. Power. Power lines. That's the right one. Boom, 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 boom. Build the power lines anyway. Overwhelming. So our budget, our, our credit rating is still poor. Mostly, I think, because there's still a recession. Right now, we'd get 66% of the vote in the election, which is pretty good. Let me do a vote right now for a nuclear power. Yes, power. Yes, power and weapons. Ban it. Great poll. Nuclear poll. I'm curious to see what people would think. Most people are in favor of it. In fact, a lot of people would like to, weapons added to this. But only 18% of the people want to ban it. Whereas 45% want it for power and 37% of people want it for power and weapons. So we're keeping the nuclear power for now. We'll see how it goes. Where's the, uh, there's a place you can go f to find the energy efficiency. I guess if we click here, click energy efficiency, uh, it's light bulb plus. So the more efficient energy efficiency we have, the better our GDP, it lower the CO2 emissions and the lower the oil demand. We already have <coughs> micro generation grants, which is basically you have a house, throw some solar panels on the, uh, on the roof, clean energy subsidies, science funding, and our nuclear program, helping our energy efficiency overall, which is really good for our country. Yeah, and Canada has the uh, the tar sands fields, but it's not actually used for our power generation very much. It is pretty dirty stuff, um, and people are trying to figure out, you know, better ways to use this or that or whatever. 
you know, how do you how do you make it clean and different things like that. So th those are definitely issues. But the, the tar sands issue is very different than the Canadian power generation issue. Our power generation is pretty clean, um, mostly because of the hydroelectric. What do we want to do next in here? Do, 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 do. Stop more crimes, remove the riots. Well, it dropped a little bit because we were reducing poverty. I still like the approach of reducing poverty to um, remove the inner city riots problem, as opposed to just more police. Because we are social liberals. Although we're improving, we're increasing poverty by taxing drugs and alcohol. Although we haven't maxed this out yet or anything. We're considering it. Uh, poll, let's see. An actual poll. Uh, alc tax. Um, leave at 15%. Raise to, say, 45%. Raise to 75%. Great pull. Keep in mind, higher alcohol tax increases poverty. But it would make a lot of money, remove reduce alcoholism, and you know potentially resolve some other issues. It's tough. Okay, most people want to raise it. There's debate as to whether we raise it to 75 or 45%. 45% is currently leading. And in any case, I would have said, let's raise it to 45% first and see what happens. So we're going to bring it up to 45% because that is leading. Just barely, slightly above 75%. But clearly people want to see it raised. So we will do that. 45% alcohol tax. And I think I'll move to the next turn. Homelessness continues to drop. It should actually go away completely. And once it does, it'll help crime and help all sorts of things. But I'm saying we don't want to do too many things at once because we want to let things sort of finish and see what happens. Whoops. Uh, where's the screen? Religious condemnation. The church wants me to resign. Yeah, that's less than great. Uh, economy still in recession. Poverty actually went up because of the booze, although crime is going down. Security briefing. Oh, no. Battenberg group. I think those are uh, capitalists. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. That's bad. We got some um, radicalized capitalists who now potentially want to kill me. My security effectiveness is high, mostly because we have maxed out um, Secret Service. We could also introduce like lots of stuff like wiretapping laws, internet uh, censorship, but that's not particular liberal. You know, it's a very sinister sign of a police state. As are internet laws, or internet crime, slowly going down. Intelligence services have not kicked in fully yet. So we've got to wait before that really comes into play too, too much. <clears throat> uh, the game does have settings for the countries as to how people feel about certain things. I don't know how specific it is, though. Quill, you're being poisoned? Yeah, it could be. Uh, Quill, use organ donation and stem cell research. We don't have that. And we should. I mean, it'll increase um, the chance that I'll be murdered by religious people. Organ donation is amazing. And honestly, I think it should be compulsory. I always forget about this. It's incredibly cheap and boosts health. It does piss off the religious people. But honestly, if you're dead, you, the organs don't belong to you anymore. <laughs> That's the ultimate socialist way. It's not just about uh, wealth redistribution. It's about organ redistribution. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, yes, gay marriage has been implemented. There's organ donation. Oh, and stem cell research. Uh, we don't have the political capital. It takes 45 political capital to introduce it, uh, which is pretty hard. Do we have the ability to even save up that much? Our maximum is 52. We have 30 right now. If we don't spend any more, we'll go up to uh, to 56. We'll technically burn a little bit from having hit our cap. 
Our law and order minister really hates me. I should probably replace her, actually. Spend one capital replacing her. And we will um, hire a new one. This is for, for what? Law and order. So, we were looking for people with a lot of political capital, and ideally those are people who want to be in law and order. And she does. Her sympathies are patriots and capitalists. This will make patriots and capitalists like me more. But if capitalists in general, for example, don't like me, she will eventually stop liking me. Ah, here, we'll take this guy. He wants to be a tax person. He's got a fair amount of um, political capital. He doesn't have a lot of experience yet, but he's with trade unionists and socialists, which I think will be relatively compatible. Um. Oh, hire. Derp, that's what I want to do. There we go. Better. And we'll end up with 54 although it'll cap us at 52, and then we can implement the stem cell stuff. That's a good idea. Free school meals should help out poverty as well. Oh, that's a good question. You're right. We still have to tackle poverty. Stem cell research is all good and all. All good and all? But yeah, and it's very popular with voters. Let's do that. Massively drops poverty. Makes parents happy. Increases parents' membership. More people feel like they can have kids if the schooling is done. It actually reduces obesity because it's good food, apparently. Increases health. Makes the poor happy. Oh, this is, yeah, this is such an obvious pick. Thank you very much for pointing it out. Increases poor earnings, which is good. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our deficit is now only 44 billion. Our deficit is shrinking every quarter. We uh, potentially might get a balanced budget before the next election here, which would be stunning. Homelessness is dropping. Now, the school lunches apparently has no impact on homelessness, but apparently homelessness will go away next turn regardless. And I guess we are improving poverty. Like, we're... Um, actually, poverty is going up. But the free school meals will help reduce poverty, which will impact homelessness. Next turn. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save up the points. It's not going to be enough for the stem cell research, but I'm still going to save it. Best chancellor ever. Obesity, gone. Homelessness, gone. Freedom of Information Act. Yes, we're going to propose it because we're liberals. It hurts security potentially, but other than that, it's okay. 73% of the people would vote for us. Most people like us. The problem is, a few people who hate us, really hate us. We now have Crusaders of the Lord and the Blattenberg Group, which is increasing their threat up and up and up and up over here. This is, uh... Guys, we might die before the next election. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Free meals based on... Oh my god, the golden child died a single leaf a day. That's from a, a movie, isn't it? Oh, Quill, do free eye tests. Yeah, I like that idea. Free eye tests. Poor becomes happy. Hurt. It pisses off the capitalists and the wealthy. Screw them. Reduces poverty. Improves poor earnings. Increases health even further. And makes retired people happy. There we go. More dat. What else do we want to implant? Let's go crazy. Fuel efficiency standards are actually really good. Car manufacturers don't like it, and it'd probably piss off the capitalists, but they already hate me, so what does it matter? But it actually makes motorists happy, because their cars are just better, stronger. Sounds like a Daft Punk song. So we can do this, for example. It's cheap for us, it costs us basically nothing. Just a question of what impact does it have. Lowers oil demand, which is good, keeps oil prices low, helps our, um, our sort of global trade situation. Motors will have more money does make more cars, which can increase congestion, which ironically can hurt the environment, but environmentalists are happy because it lowers emissions. And capitalists, slightly upset. Yeah, this is a good one to just sort of run overall. Everyone likes more efficient cars, really, except for the people who own the car companies because they have to work harder. I like the idea of maybe the bicycle subsidies. Flags on every street. Here's an act to discriminate against LGBTQ... Wait, it's the other way around. Oh, okay. I think we should probably do this. Um, oh, witness protection program. Unpopular, really? Why would it be unpopular? LGBTQ discrimination act. Maximum. Oh, increases liberalism membership. Great. Wait, really? It makes religious people happy? Wait, what? I mean, not to be stereotypical or anything, but... 
Prevent citizens from being discriminated against on the basis of sexuality of your gender identity, i.e. being fired for being gay. Oh, we're fine enough. Conservatives don't like it. Liberals love it. It's about time we do something that makes the, the religious people happy. Um, and I want the Witness Protection Program, which should actually improve our security. Helps lower violent crime. Excellent. How bad's violent crime, anyway? Oh, we had no violent crime. It's pointless. We're spending money to lower something that's not a problem. Hang on, I'm going to cancel that. We spent a bunch of political capital implementing and then canceling a program. <laughs> we have no violent crime. Probably because there's no guns. Do, 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 do. Is there a way to make more gardens and public green spaces? That's an excellent question. I know that you can do... Um, oh, you can do the Keep the Country Tidy campaign, which is nice. We can do... City farms, which is kind of cool. So why not bring farmers to the cities directly? The program helps ambitious farmers establish farms in or around cities so they've been close to their customers. We'll get some sort of some of the city kids to consider farming a career in farming. And, and in my mind, this is stuff like little community vegetable gardens, uh, maybe rooftop gardens or beehives, that sort of thing. It's cheap to implement. Uh, it makes farmers happy and makes more people farmers. Sure. Do farmers like me? Okay. Let's say before we make more people into farmers, do farmers like me? Yes, farmers love me. We have agricultural subsidies, organic farming subsidies. We also allow genetically modified crops. So you can do whatever you want. You can do genetically modified or you can do organic. Whatever you want, we got you covered. You know, we're social liberalists. liberalists, liberalists. You can do whatever you want and we'll pay you to do it. They don't like the power lines, but you know, whatever. It's pretty good. Trade unionists. What can I do about you guys? I mean, we're socialists, for crying out loud. You don't like the unemployment level. Well, I don't like it either. It is dropping, though. The GDP, which is still sort of... Well, it's improving, actually, so... Why so much unemployment? You don't know. Well, I think because unless the GDP was literally like 100%, I think there's always some unemployed people. And it's fought off by some of these other things. We increase rail subsidies, give more people jobs in the railroads. Our size funding is not as high as it could be. I think, whoa, that's expensive. Oh, I do. I would love to max this out, but that is insanely expensive. Our technology is pretty good, so I don't think we have to rush it. Today, the rule of Quill 18 came to an end after he was killed by a genetically modified turnip. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, science funding, please. Yeah, well, we were just talking about that. Do we want to increase the science funding? It's a good question. Uh, is this it? Yes. Let's do a quick little poll. Keeping in mind, we're still running a deficit. On the other hand, sometimes you have to spend money to make money, especially if you're a socialist. Science funding max out or leave as is for now i mean if we're making money i'd be like yeah let's max it out the thing is maxing it out might be the correct answer from the start science funding science funding does improve gdp a lot like quite a bit improves energy efficiency improves technology which again funnels back into the gdp <clears throat> Oh, everyone wants us to max it out. Huge percentage. So yeah, let's get some particle accelerators. Let's build build CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, and all that kind of jazz. Next turn. Ooh, one of my cabinet members wants to talk. Oh, she's all pissed. Okay, well, we'll replace her then. We just hit high productivity. Look at that. Actually, it's probably the science funding that actually put it just over the top. Does science funding help uh, productivity? Well, technology does. And the technological advantage, which is probably getting slightly better. Nice! Nice! Look at that boost. 
GDP, more people become self-employed. Oh, I could do some more small business initiatives. Those are pretty good. The capitalists make them happy, and more people become self-employed again. Whaling! Well, here's the thing. We are social liberalists. Doesn't mean that we are environmentalists as part of our core platform. So, do we want to ban whaling or allow whaling? Whaling. Uh, resume. Or keep ban. Mm. Whaling. Yeah, whaling in Germany. Doesn't seem like the sort of thing that would happen. Massive trend for keeping the band. Okay, I agree. Budget report. Credit worrying, uh, rating is still triple C, despite the fact that our GDP is, like, doing amazing. Global economy is improving, though. That's good. Look at the GDP. Just skyrocket. How do we not have a better credit rating? Actually, I guess the credit rating is actually based on our debt load. That's actually the problem. If you take a look at our expenses... Oh, I was going to say, our biggest expense is probably our debt interest, but it's not. State pension, state health service. It would be nice if we could lower the deficit because then we'd be paying less in debt, which would mean we'd be making more of a surplus, which means we could pay off more debt, which means we'd make more of a surplus and so on and so forth. Improve our credit rating, do all that kind of jazz. Income, mostly from income tax. Again, the more GDP improves, the more income tax will go up as well. Charts, yay. The debt. Like, it's still rising, although not rising quite as quickly, which is important. Hey, Dag, thanks for subscribing. Whalers on the moon. We're whalers on the moon. All right. We should probably stop spending money and increasing taxes. We could make a lot of money from this. We could... Increase corporate taxes, uh, which is the business end. Corporate taxes are very low. It does hurt the GDP. Well, not for a while. You can see it starts off very slowly, and then it, like, skyrockets. If we put the corporate tax rate at about 25%, the impact on our GDP would be relatively minimal. What do we think? We'd raise a lot more money. Because right now, 17 billion, so we'd bring it up to about 38 billion at 25%. Quite a bit more money to help bring down our deficit. Rabid capitalists are already planning on killing me, so. Yeah, and tax evasion will trigger, which is really, really bad. You're right. Tax evasion is horrible, it puts everything backwards. You raise the taxes, now people start evading taxes, so now all of a sudden, um, you make less money. While also still pissing off people. Maybe we'll just tax something else. Ta capital gains tax. Does that lead to tax evasion? I don't know. Luxury goods taxes. Most people are in favor, we could raise a bit of money that way. Let's do mansion taxes, luxury goods taxes, capital gain taxes. Instead of, uh, the capital. Instead of the corporate income tax. So we'll start with the luxury goods. I don't know if they're going to start doing tax avoidance from this. Uh, next. Capital gains. Whoosh. Oh, that hurts the GDP. Whoa. A lot. Even at 1%, it hurts the GDP. We can make some serious money with it, though. Oh, yeah, and it's too late. Like, well, I guess... I, I, no, I can't cancel. It's so... I don't like that you can't see what it's going to do until you've committed the, the political capital. It does hurt the GDP, but maybe not as much as you'd think. Let's do this. We can always revert it later. 
Let's see what happens. Religious plot. Oh, no. Market meltdown. Oh, the overseas economy is just tanked. Great. Global economy is in a deep recession. I was raising taxes when, like, the economy was good. Now, our GDP... Like, we didn't do it. It's not our fault. We are making a slight surplus, though. Look at this. Even with the economy going to crap, we're making a slight surplus. The problem is it'll probably keep dropping for a little while longer. Which is really unfortunate. Yeah, you're right. We should do a charity count update. What are we at? Refresh. Hopefully there's more donations. We're over 7,000! Woo-hoo! 7,000 in donations. That's amazing. We have a... Uh... We have a few hours left of the stream. It would be really nice to reach 10,000. It was an ambitious goal, but how amazing would it be if we could possibly reach there? Oh, man. 7,000 bucks for charity for sick kids for hospitals. Really good. Really good. Yeah. Well, we'll get to the pick after this. Um, so, people keep asking more taxes punitive wealth tax tax the poor like or the rich directly prostitution tax people keep asking for it we can tax religious institutions we're not specifically anti-religious high-tech products tax Hurt the GDP, lower technology, tax the internet. Tax fraud department is maybe. That will help to offset um, the chance that we'll get the um, tax avoid avoidance. Because what I could do is I could max this out in the first place. I assume that this helps fight the uh, the tax evasion. So it'll cost money, but it'll actually increase income. And we might be able to raise corporate income tax after that and not get tax evasion. Religious plot. Our credit rating was downgraded. The double C. No! Oh, wow. We're running a $40 billion deficit again. Kind of surprised, actually. The GDP is not tanking. Because our debt interest, because our credit rating is so bad, our debt interest just spiked up. And presumably some of our income just dropped. It did. We're not making any money from our tobacco tax anymore because there's no smokers. Well, that's good. <sighs> Did they nerf CO2 tax in the game? Used to be one of the best taxes. I don't know. We haven't really enacted that, have we? We could try it. Is that... Oh, carbon tax. We need... We need 39, we have 34. If we did not much this turn, we could enact a carbon tax, which would improve the environment a fair bit. But probably hurt the GDP quite a bit. Lower military spending. Well, that's an idea. Ceremonial only. We'd have no military strength. We could potentially get attacked. Attacked? It actually will worsen unemployment slightly. It will save us a lot of money. What do people want to do? 
Now, yeah, because right now it's decreasing unemployment. So if we got rid of it, it would actually no longer improve unemployment because people can get jobs in the military. Oh, we almost got rid of the inner city riots. We're so close. Internet crime is on a down. Alcohol abuse bounced up at some point. Lower foreign aid, I'm not going to do that. Foreign aid's uh, really good for lots of things, including foreign relations, which is actually pretty poor right now. Foreign relations helps tourism, all kinds of stuff. No soldiers, no foreign aid, lower pensions, more army, petrol tax, lower road maintenance. Someone wants stem cell research. Lower pensions. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do that. It's not. That's not the socialist way. Did you tax pot? Yeah, didn't we? Right here. Making us uh, $1.5 billion a quarter, which is not bad at all. I know it's not very... Um... Oh, well, there's no GDP impact. I think we're going to have to get rid of the capital gains um... tax. I think it's going to hurt the GDP too much. It is raising some money, though. God, it really is. But, you know, better GDP equals more money from other ways. Mansion tax. The carbon tax might be a really good idea. Could hurt the uh, GDP, but it would help the environment. Put it at 25%, don't get rid of it. Oh, the uh, capital gains? We did put around 25%, which is sort of where the GDP impact is now. It wouldn't get any worse. We'd make less money. Wow, it's just like real politics. Everyone has different ideas. Bus passes. I think I'm going to wait one turn and just do the carbon tax and see what it does for us. We're gonna find out. I'm worried it's gonna kill the GDP. Yeah. Brain drain? No! Because of the high income tax and luxury good tax, all of our uh, smart people are leaving. Look at the impact on the GDP. Let's get rid of the luxury goods tax right away. That's not good. That is really, really double plus ungood. And it's not making us much money anyway. Cancel! Enact. Carbon tax. Implement. GDP impact is huge. Oh my god. It's gonna cripple, cripple our economy. Although, ah, hold on. If we brought it down to around here, it has almost no GDP impact at all. And it can raise 20 billion. No, people don't tend to like it. There we go. We have a decision. Oil drilling companies want to drill in a wildlife refuge. What are we going to do? Again, our, our mandate is not environmental, so I will definitely poll people. So do we allow them to drill for oil in a wildlife refuge? Sure, it's going to be considered to be pretty bad for the environment. Certainly, the environmentalists will hate it. Oh, some people want to allow it. Probably helps our economy. We're going to allow the drilling.
Uh, we're gonna allow it. Maybe it'll help the uh, the GDP. I don't know. Deficit did drop a little bit. We're gonna try to get rid of that uh, brain drain. We got rid of the luxury goods taxes. I don't know if it's gonna be enough though. We're out of political capital, so we can't do anything else. Hopefully, we don't get assassinated. Scientific discovery! Yay! Patriots like it. The GDP goes up. Oh, one of our cabinet ministers hates me. That's right. I'm gonna have to go and can her. Right over here. You're fired. I'm gonna hire someone better. Thank you. Uh, oh, it's gonna take several turns for luxury goods tax to go away. I'm hoping that despite the income tax where it is, this will go away. If this doesn't go away and I'll have to drop the income tax, that's gonna be devastating. Devastating. Really, really bad. But I can't keep this round. This is this is awful. So hopefully when the luxury goods tax goes away, it'll be enough to reverse the brain drain. But we may actually have to drop the income tax enough because it's got to go below the green line for it to go away. And then we can bump the income tax back up at that point. I have to play it by ear. I'm worried that our deficit is just, uh, our debt is getting too big. I'm really concerned. All right, maybe we should, uh, should we cut the services? That's always tough. Should we get rid of that military spending? The way to do it, again, an improve increase unemployment. Tax petrol. Did we not already? Mm, we do. We don't have a car tax. We could increase the petrol tax. Hurts GDP a lot, though. Although, we could bring it all the way up to around 40-ish without a really uh, any impact on the GDP. That's a lot of money. Oh, I need more political, politi the political capital. So next turn, we'll increase the petrol tax. Election! Looks like we have won our next term easily, assuming we don't get assassinated and assuming we don't tank our economy altogether. We have a uh, social liberal thing. Ban same-sex marriage. No, of course we're going to allow it. Literally, we have it explicitly allowed. I don't know why that's even a question. Petrol tax. Go. Brain drain. Okay, dropping quickly. Good. We need to get rid of that completely. If every nothing else matters until we get rid of that, because that's such a drain on our GDP. Inner city riots just ended. Oh man, we got more of a credit rating downgrade. Okay, now I think our economy's just sunk because our uh, interest payments are too high because our economy because our uh, credit rating is so bad. We've gone past the point of no return because our debt's just going to grow bigger, which means our credit rating is going to get worse. Okay, let's cut out the military. It's not going to be enough. Um, there's no way we can do it. Well, now that we have the uh, the debt, the anti-debt agency, maybe we can increase increase corporate taxes till right before about 25 percent before it hurts the GDP. Get that going. I think we're probably sunk though. But we got reelected. Got a media backlash for something. Everyone loves us, but apparently we can't run an economy. Brain drain. Okay, it'll go away next turn. That'll help the GDP, which will help boost income. I probably could have enacted things. Credit rating upgraded. Yes. Okay. Surplus of 7 billion. We need to keep the surplus. Now that the brain drain has gone away, we can raise income tax, which I will do. Not too much. It doesn't hurt the GDP, though, which is quite noticeable. Notable. We'll raise it up to about 55%. That might be actually way more than is necessary. Because from 126, say 140. We're just going to give it a little bit of a nudge. I don't want to trigger another brain drain. Um, and this, we're already making a, a surplus. This will make an even bigger surplus. And actually doesn't hurt people too much. Assuming we don't start any tax evasion. Make some serious bank with that. 
We have a lot of political capital. Not sure what we want to do. Obviously, we can't do anything that costs us money. Be nice to get things that make money. Um, and that can be things like small business grants. It takes a long time to pay off, but it's really, really good. It can be quite expensive, though. Space program, really expensive. Um, hmm. Oh, the business startup campaign is really cheap and generally entirely positive. S makes fewer people in socialists, but to me, it's not so bad. It's really cheap. Well, it mostly just makes more self-employed people and make them happier. It doesn't necessarily... I thought it would increase the GDP. Cancel. Uh, stem cell. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't have the points for it. Next turn. Next turn, we stem cell. Foreign military bases. Our puny military forces are unfit to defend our country against an enemy attack. Our allies offer to garrison some of their troops in our territory for common defense. This is great! I'm sure to piss off the Patriots, but if we don't have to pay for the military... Could you imagine Germany having, like, foreign military bases inside it? Like, American military bases inside of Germany? Have you ever heard of such a crazy thing? I think we should allow it, but I'll straw poll it. Ferengi military bases. Allow... Refuse. Boop. I mean, maybe bad things will come of it, but I don't know. Military bases. Boom. Results. Like 90% in favor. Yep, we're going to allow it. Boom. So yeah, Patriots. There's no way they like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Oh, uh, well. Sucks to be them. How's our uh, security status? Effectiveness is high. Lots of people with real threat. The Freedom League included. No brain drain. A surplus of 61 billion. Yes! Although our debt got all the way to almost $2 trillion. But it's going down. Which is good. And it'll drop a lot faster as soon as we get the, an, another improvement in our credit rating. We already got one bump. We'll probably get another one relatively soon. Uh, stem cell research. I was going to click again. Um, public services? Mm, no. Who that? Mangoes of Doom! You've been a subscriber before. Glad to have you back. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for subscribing. Why is this not alphabetical? Or searchable in some way. Do I already have it? I'm clearly missing it. Oh, there it is. Stem cell research. It's cheap. The religious people hate it, but it does increase health, technology, and GDP. Right, it's a long-term thing. Usually I do that as one of the first things, and I've just forgotten about it in this game. Long-term, big boost to GDP. It will take 22 quarters to fully take effect, though. Yeah, it is one of the things you want to do first. I need so much capital, it's hard to fit in. Uh, you may have forgotten that technically we have sovereignty in the tiny island of Marbudos. Well, the good news is we still technically do, but the bad news is that at 9 o'clock this morning, we no longer have effective control of the island. Separatist rebels have stormed the governor's building. So everyone hates it. Patriots really hate it, and it makes more people into patriots. We do have a weak military. Credit rating updated. Yes! We're now B. Very, very good. And unfortunately, we've got an asthma epidemic, which most countries start with. We didn't this time around. Um, car usage has been dropping, hasn't it? No. We're taxing petrol and everything. You'd think it would be bringing it down. But as the GDP improves, more people... Uh, start to own cars, which is the problem. Thunderzailt. Thank you for subscribing. Thundersbolt, maybe? Up military. 
We do have money now, and we have 100 billion in surplus, which is really, really stonking good. So this will bring up one of the uh, most confusing bits about the asthma epidemic. Asthma epidemic is actually it's being brought down by the environment. Oh, okay. So the our environment is new. No, it's not good actually. It's still good enough to help bring it down, but the environment took a huge nosedive, and I think that's when our, our GDP started to recover, perhaps. It's mostly being impacted by our positive GDP. Positive GDP, we're spending more, we're producing more, we're doing all kinds of things. So there's a few different ways we can combat that. And we might, I, I think for one, we are going to go ahead and boost uh, our army. We'll bring up a light defensive army again. Just hopefully enough to event, prevent some of those really, really bad things. Now that we fix that. The other thing we can do... Hall C, thank you for subscribing. I don't know what happened to Hall A through F, but you know, I'm happy Hall C is here. Uh, so we can do a bunch of environmental stuff. Some of which can hurt the economy, others will not. Um, green industry subsidies. That seems like a great way to start. Rather than restricting people, why don't we give subsidies to healthy businesses? I'm going to start with that. So we, we will boost the environment, make environments less happy, while increasing the GDP a lot. Holy crap. Lowering CO2 emissions, lowering oil demand, upsetting capitalists a bit. Oh, this seems like huge win. Five billion a quarter for that much of a boost to the GDP? Big no-brainer there. Plastic bag tax? Maybe. I don't know how much of a difference it actually makes to the environment. With smart meters, that can be a thing. Um, keep the country tidy. MNZ, thanks for subscribing. Like to have you here. Especially if you have good eyes and can see things that can help. So clean fuel subsidies, bus subsidies, bus lanes, biofuel subsidies, which also makes um, farmers happy, I think. Monorail. 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 Say it with me. Uh, car, bus, uh, bicycle subsidies. Carpooling can reduce traffic. What do we want to do? Recycling in a hybrid car initiative? Mm -hmm. The GOG stream starts in an hour. We definitely have to take a decent break before then. The rest of my voice. Hybrid car initiatives. It's cheap. Popular. Let's do it. It actually increases car usage. But it has a more positive impact on the environment than the car usage. So that's okay. It's really cheap. I like it. That's about it for our political capital, so let's skip to the next turn. Achievement unlocked! Intelligentsia! You have managed to preside over an unparalleled period of high educational achievement and turn this nation into the world's intelligentsia. Congratulations. Housing expansion. This is a tough one. There's a shortage of homes in our country, and the government is under pressure to relax planning laws and allow previously restricted green belt land to be built on. So we can relax it. House prices are rising far faster than earnings due mainly to the shortage of supply. In the long term, the only solution is to build more housing. It's no good providing housing where there are no jobs, and if that means building on a small portion of the green belt land, then that's the price we have to pay. Or, we can keep the planning restrictions. There's always pressure to build new homes on greenfield sites because housing companies find it cheaper and easier to build on them. There are plenty of urban sites that should be reused before we resort to carving up the countryside. A sudden expansion into the greenbelt would have a dreadful impact on rural communities. Rupple. Housing. Relax or keep?
three quarters of you guys want to keep the housing restrictions. We will do that. Budget report is still a B and not great. Serious threats, of course. Surplus, still good. Debt, dropping. Expenditures. There we go. Our interest payments are shrinking considerably as a portion of all of our expenses overall. Which is good. The more we pay off, the less we have to pay, the better we get overall. And if we can improve our credit rating, like to an A, or even like a triple A, oh, we're laughing. All right, we have points we can spend. Yeah, only ever vote on the straw poll link. The chat is too noisy. You can't follow that. <laughs> but people can try to influence one another. You know, things like that are fine. Poverty. Look at the poverty. Look how much we've crushed poverty. Tourism is pretty bad, though. And I would like to boost tourism. Now, higher tourism does lead to more airplanes, which leads to more air pollution, though. How's our asthma epidemic? Hmm. Environment quality is improving, which is good. Hybrid car initiatives are still kicking in. Green industry subsidies are still kicking in. Um, I don't want to spend too much money on the environment too fast because we can easily sort of overkill it and, and find out we've spent too much money on stuff. Mm, excuse me. General media censorship. Wow. And divorce. Art subsidies? Who needs art? Honestly. Tourism ads, bicycle subsidies, tax the military? I think we can do that. It allow medical narcotics. I don't know if that's going to help us at this time, though. Keep the country tidy. It's cheap. We'll encourage people to not pollute. Give a hoot. Don't pollute. Could introduce some more taxes, but I don't think I want to mess with anything too much. I'm worried about breaking stuff. Robotics. No, we're going to try not to spend too much money either. Tourism subsidies. You know, the tourism ad campaign, though, is probably a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. So a lot of people are asking for that. Someone's saying art subsidies are amazing. Improve foreign relations, which is actually really good for our economy. And higher tourism. I think we're going to see our money back on that one. Someone's saying art subsidies are good. So let's take a look at the art subsidies. Makes liberals happy, makes capitalists unhappy, improves foreign relations, improves tourism, improves education, makes more people into liberalists. It's quite expensive, though. That's $2 billion we're talking about at this point. But again, more tourism foreign relations. It's more expensive than the tourism campaign and takes forever to pay off. Wow, this is like the sort of thing you want to start on day one, although it's also very expensive. Oof. Team Fury Fires, thanks for subscribing. Hmm. Eh, all right, let's do it. Finland has opera house level art subsidies. Poverty eradicated. <laughs> You're welcome, Germany. Listen, if ever you need some help, oh God, I'm gonna get executed. Separatist rebels? Rebels? In my country? Separatist rebels have taken up arms, seized strongholds in one of our provinces, demand independence, ownership of all state property, and mandate to found an intermediate government. Ah, oh, they're Scottish. There are doubts whether the new government will be fully democratic. Send in the army. Their demands are outrageous. This is a mutiny. A crime with only one punishment. Our military can easily dispose of these thugs so we can uphold democracy within our borders. Or negotiate with rebels. We shall not use force against our own citizens. We can consider giving them autonomy so that we can restore peace within the nation. Very curious to see what people might want to say here. 
rebels. Um, army or negotiate. Very curious to see. Rebels, there's the poll. Click it. Click it. Remember, chat votes don't count. Click the link. Are you a rebel? Yeah, that's the one. Oh, people seem to want to roll out the army. It's a good thing we refunded them again. Because we didn't have an army. It was purely ceremonial for a while there. We have an army. It's it's small, but we have one. Didn't we? Didn't we? We started funding our army again. I'm pretty sure. Hmm? People want to send in the army. What could possibly go wrong? Made the patriots slightly more happy, which I guess is a thing. Crusaders of the Lord. They do hate us. There's not a lot of religious people left in the country, but the ones that are here really hate us. Asthma epidemic, mm, went down a bit and then sort of flatlined. Environment not really improving that much. Eco home regulations. Could put in the plastic bag tax. It might help. We'll try. Some people wanted it earlier. All right. Oh, that, no, that just, that doesn't make an actual difference. Much like in real life. It makes the environmentalists happier, but it doesn't actually do anything. Whoops. So, I, I think I would like to do is decrease car usage. Cute, clean fuel subsidies. Ultra low sulfur fuel. Or in the bike subsidies. They're cheap. There you go. Lower the car usage. Didn't we do this already? I guess we have two bike things. We have the bike campaign and the bike subsidies. Clean fuel. Everyone loves it. As long as we're willing to pay a billion dollars a quarter for it. Monorail. 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 It takes a long time to pay off. And it's pretty expensive. F it. Let's do it. Maximum funding. Decreased car usage. Also unemployment. Makes commuters happy. Monorail. 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 Gridlock. Because of traffic congestion. Well, we're trying to drop car usage. Yeah, car usage just keeps going up and up and up. We could build more roads. But really... I hate car people. We have to tax cars. Got another Nobel Prize, though. Let's put in a car tax. No more cars. Doesn't hurt the GDP at all. There. No more cars. Religious plots. People smuggling. Oh, let's let them stay. We need to replace all the people who were left when uh, we banned cars. There we go. Gridlock. Almost instantly eliminated. <laughs> Asthma epidemic will be improved as the car usage decreases. We still need to hammer it a lot, though. No more roadworks. Although, hold on. I'm going to wait until con the uh, gridlock goes away. And then cancel all the roadworks. Actually, yeah. That'll be it. I don't have toll roads. It's a good idea, actually. Uh, toll roads. Bloop. Oh, this... I'm surprised this doesn't actually decrease the number of motorists. Religious plot. Gridlock is at an end. DNA database. No. We're liberals. No DNA lab database. GDP is almost completely maxed. Urgh. That political muscle. Asthma going down. Car usage. Still ridiculous. But a lot of these things still have to be uh, kicked in here. Which is certainly part of it. Road building. Oh, I can't cancel it. Decrease. Decrease. 
We hate cars. Terrorist attack? Dramatically lowers tourism. Oh man, people are pissed. And we got a credit rating downgrade? Or upgrade. Upgrade. Okay. The opposite of down. The word is up. Our surplus is now 127 billion. That's good. Paying off that debt. We actually got lower debt than when we started the game. Uh, with the credit rating upgrade and the fact that our debt keeps shrinking, look at this. I think last time we checked we were paying 25 billion a quarter in debt. Now it's only 10 billion a quarter. That's good. I think what we can do is um, we can improve our, our... Well, the bus usage is still crap. Okay, we want more people using buses or trains. Free bus passes? Free bus passes. Listen. Everyone, get on the bus. Stop using cars. And uh, rail subsidies. Oh, they're expensive. Wow. Bus lanes. I like it. Bus lanes. More bus usage. What else can we do? Bus subsidies. Subsidized school buses. Our education is pretty good already. Telecommuting. Everyone, get off the goddamn road. Stay at home in your underwear. And work from home. Bus subsidies. All right, next turn. 92% of people would vote for us. Software patents. Oh man, this is a tough one. We need more army. Yeah, you're probably right. We'll, we'll pump up the army. Software patents. Um, so software patents are a form of intellectual property law that allows companies to protect algorithms that implement a new technology such as new type of translation software or system for purchasing online. They are generally popular with big business, but unpopular with those who fight for a free internet and those who think the patents are far too general and stifle innovation. Do we allow or reject them? Boom. Patents. Close this for now. Come back to it. Did I not fund the army again? Yeah, I funded it. We've got a, we've got an army. We don't have much of an army. Maybe we should boost it up. Because things are happening. We'll go all the way up to well trained. People have correctly rejected software patents. Good work, everyone. Asthma. The hell? It's going back up. Car usage is going down, though. And the environment? Also going down, which is not good. So our GDP is improving. Also, the better our GDP is, the more air travel there is. And the better our GDP is, the more car usage there is. The but you can see car usage double dips. Car usage hurts the epidemic directly, and it brings down the environment. God, it was almost gone. Just give everyone face masks. Can we do that? Mandatory microgeneration. And the smart meters. Smart meters can get people to use less stuff. Increases energy efficiency. Which is good. I'm going to do something else. I can't remember what it was now. Lower CO2 emissions.
Pick your cabinet. Cabinet's okay. This guy here is getting to be a bit whiny, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. Diplomatic Service Corps. Boost foreign relations. Take 24 quarters. They'll take forever. We're just going to play until the end of this term. We're two terms. Oh, no! Race riots! No! No! Racial tension, too high. Um, Immigration, very high. High immigration equals more racial tension. Now, we can we can fix that. We got another credit rating upgrade. We're now double A. That is a hell of a bump. Continuing to make a crap ton of money. Okay, so we want not racial profiling. We want compulsory language lessons. If you know multiple languages, reduces racial tension. We want... Stamp out racism week. That doesn't do a whole lot, but, you know, it's there. Compulsory foreign language classes. Did we not? I'm confused. This is a different one from the other one. It takes a long time to do. And then we're out of political capital. Social Justice Foundation. Just makes more people into liberals. Uh, we've... Got enough liberals. We don't have to spend money on that. Like, literally, 100% of our population are liberals now. We literally do not need any more liberals. We could not possibly have any more liberals. They're fanatically supportive of me. Excellent. Oh my god, cyber warfare. High GDP, high technology, poor intel- Or no, wait. Yeah, so our intelligence services are bringing it down, which is good. High GDP and technology is bringing it up, but obviously we're not going to lower either one of those. Our military spending or better foreign relations could help to um, to remove that. We might have to spend more on our military. What's the impact on this? Oh, hurts our GDP a lot. We probably fight it with like wiretapping, internet censorship something or other foreign aid yes you're right let's boost foreign aid um oh i was hoping that's actually going to increase the number of ethnic minorities which is going to worsen racial tension on the other hand high foreign relations will um will decrease the cyber warfare stuff we could uh decrease immigration We could tighten up the border controls. Hurts tourism, though. We could... Um, oh, there's, what, citizenship tests and things we could put in. I mean, if what we wanted to do is lower... Um, is lower the immigration rate. We could do that if we wanted to. It's not nice. Language courses. There, more language courses. Oh, this is for the immigrants. Yeah. Compulsory. It will actually increase the number of ethnic minorities that come, but it will decrease racial tension. And more ethnic minorities is fine. I don't actually want to decrease it, although if I had to, I would do it. I just, you know, would prefer not having race riots. Which is almost exclusively being caused by racial tension. Which is almost exclusively being caused by oops our high um, our high immigration because our country is so awesome everyone wants to come here so it's really it's a good thing oh I'll show it again you guys I know what you guys are talking about I'll show it again uh, I promised I would when we hit seven thousand. Mm. Racism Act, no immigrants equals no racial tension. Well, I think we're just going to cruise to the next election at this point. Our debt is now below one trillion. You're welcome, Germany. Oh, credit rating got downgraded. Oh, we're only an A. There is a deep recession, our, and our GDP is dropping as a result 
of, well, the cyber warfare as well. But it's mostly the global economy. No, cyber warfare is really hurting a lot. It is almost gone, though. For some reason. Probably because it's hurting the GDP, so with the drop in the GDP, there's less of a thing. It's kind of like self-writing. You know, at this point, we could sneak in a little bit of wiretapping. Which is always funny. You know, we go and create all this, and then it's like, you know what, maybe we should just listen in on everything. And CCTVs. Or CCTV cameras. Or we could just pump up the military. Hey, what? You know what? We can't possibly get any more immigrants. Let's go ahead and pump our, our foreign aid. We're so rich, we may as well help the rest of the world. Or oh, surplus dropped considerably oh, when our GDP came crashing down. Next elections. Well, I'm pretty sure we've got this one in a bag. In fact, out of the 81 million people who live in Germany and can vote, apparently, 73 million voted for me. It's practically a dictatorship. Asthma epidemic is gone. Ghettos have come in. Okay, so, um, listen, we fixed a lot of problems. And then there's a few others. Although, honestly, these two problems could be eliminated with strict border controls plus citizenship tests. If we wanted to take that route, we could eliminate it overnight. But for now, that's going to bring us to an end to Democracy 3. What's going to happen at this point is I'm going to take a break. Um, and then we're going to move over to the GOGCom Twitch channel. Uh, because from 2 to about 3.30ish, we'll be playing Dreamfall over there. And then after that, we're going to swing back over here, play some um, Artemis with the rest of the Get Waved uh, fundraising crew. And then we'll probably keep going. Um, stay tuned for some more news with the uh, the donation stuff. We'll do a donation count check here. And uh, yeah, then we'll go for the break. Oh my god, my voice is dying. This is going to be a hard day.